The Epiphone Slash Collection Les Paul Standard is a bad deal. No one should buy this thing. Or at least that seems to be the common narrative online. And the internet kind of has a point. So today, we're gonna test that narrative. This is the Slash Les Paul in question. Someone's scribbled some shit on it, but is it a bad deal? Let's take a closer look. Now, this particular one has been vandalized by someone, and that someone just so happens to be a certain legendary top hatted guitarist whose most famous riff was a practice routine that's gotten out of hand and is banned from many guitar centers around the country. Yeah, um, I don't know how this has happened. Slash has sent me a guitar. <laughs> Who would have thought? Started off making nerdy ass guitar videos in my bedroom, and now I've got a signed Slash guitar. Not sure it's deserved, but <laughs> I'm not complaining. And now I choose to believe that we're uh, best buds. I mean, let's be honest, he probably sends a ton of these and has no idea where this one ended up. But you know what? It's still really, really cool. Even though he forgot to remove the switch tip and the pickup selector got completely shirt off in shipping. But since we're best buds, I have forgiven slash this time. Okay, so attempted bribery aside, this is a gear channel. I have a job to do, an obligation to provide honest takes. And you guys have been asking, is this a bad deal? Well, kind of. And I'll tell you more in just a second, right after I tell you about a definite good deal, the sponsor of today's video, Zbiotics. No, but actually, this is really cool. Check it out. So, Zbiotics is a scientifically engineered pre alcohol probiotic drink with the goal of eliminating alcohol's terrible morning after effects. One of the best possible uses for science. And here's how it works whether you're winding down hard at the end of a tough week or maybe having a nice, chill, celebratory toast. A byproduct of that alcohol is a toxin called acetaldehyde. So what these legends have done is use the power of science to create a probiotic that you take before you drink, and it works throughout the night by producing an enzyme that breaks down acetaldehyde in your gut. So it kind of turns your gut into an extra liver, if you want to think of it that way. Combined with proper sleep and hydration, you wake up ready to make the most of the next day. And I can personally attest to this. I recently went to an Atlanta United game. We suck, and I used used a number of beers to compensate. The Z-Biotics worked. I'm really susceptible to the next day effects of alcohol. Sometimes not even, next hour effects, but it was crazy. Usually I'd have to spend the day on the couch recovering, but I was up, I was productive, 
I felt great. Live shows are back, we're in the middle of wedding season. This is something that's gonna be very, very helpful. So if you wanna see why so many people trust Zbiotics on fun nights without giving up the next day, head on over to zbiotics.com slash agafish and you'll get 15% off your order by using my code agafish. There's also a 100% money back guarantee. So trying it out is kind of a no-brainer, which is an apt day of how I feel the next day without Zbiotics. The link will also be in the description. And of course, clicking it helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're doing that, let's talk more about Slash's guitar. And obviously, Slash has had a ton of Gibson and Epiphone signatures. Even on this channel, I've got demos of other Slash models, including the Gibson Slash Collection Les Paul, which you should totally check out after this video, link in the cards, and some of his Epiphone models, which have always been easy recommendations. Good, affordable Les Pauls, unique Slash specific specs, and limited edition signatures hold their value for resale more than standard production models. I'll give you two examples, the Slash Firebird and the Slash Les Paul Standard Plus Top Pro, what a name. They're both selling for higher on the used market now than they sold for new. They both had Slash's signature Seymour Duncan pickups, the Plus Top even had an ebony board, which the Gibson didn't, and I mean forget Slash's name on it, a green flame top standard with an ebony board. Love that. That was 2018 though. Fast forward to now, 2022, if you're watching this sometime in the future, but Gibson have completely redevised their slash strategy. <laughs> In addition to being my new best bud, he also became the first Gibson ambassador. They launched the Gibson Slash collection and then the corresponding more affordable Epiphone Slash collection. On the electric side, the collection consists of five Les Paul standards, Victoria, Gold Top, Appetite Burst, Vermilion Burst, Anaconda Burst, and this November Burst. But there's something different about these Slash collection models compared to previous Slash signatures. These are not Seymour Duncans. This is a thousand dollar Epiphone and we've got El Nico 2 Pro Buckers instead. Well, shit. I mean, they sound all right, a little muddy. <laughs> PAFE based on burst buckers. They actually sound a little better here than they normally do because they're uncovered, so they're brighter. But the signature Seymour Duncan set was one of the key advantages of the Slash Epiphones. But okay, what else do we have here? Let's not pass final judgment too early. Mahogany body, carved maple top, AAA maple veneer, apart from the gold top, set mahogany neck, Indian laurel fingerboard, 22 medium jumbo frets. It's a Les Paul. Basically. <laughs> Basically, this is an affordable 59 spec Les Paul standard. We've got a nut from Graftech. Good. Using the Nut Masters is a big improvement over the crappy plastic nuts on older Epiphones. CTS Pots, again, another improvement over the cheap mini pots in older Epiphones. So, good specs if you're in the market for a nice Les Paul standard. You want to hear something interesting though? <laughs> You know what else has essentially identical specs, even down to the vintage deluxe tuners with snot colored buttons? The Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s, which retails for 250 bucks less. It doesn't have the hard case though, the Slash does, and the Slash also has custom Slash graphics. And I'll come back to those in a second. There are other differences on the spec sheet between this and the standard 50s, like orange drop capacitors on the Slash model. And that's a cool spec to have, that's what Gibson's use, but it doesn't really matter. A higher quality capacitor will probably last longer and the tolerance will be more precise, but the value is actually what matters for capacitors when it comes to tone. So it's interesting for specs here. Unlike when we compare a lot of other guitars, we've actually got pretty much as close to an apples to apples comparison as you can get here. And so far, this doesn't seem like a great deal, but as we all know, you can't judge a guitar solely from the spec sheet. What about playability? Well, the neck shapes between the Slash and the Standard 50s are listed differently. The Slash is a Slash custom C shape. The 50s is a rounded 50s medium C. But as I explained, they're both based on a chunky 59. And Epiphone tends to use the same neck profiles while calling them different things. And I'm not knocking them for it, by the way. It's efficient 
and it's consistent. Like, can you imagine what a nightmare it would be for consumers to compare if there were a billion different neck profiles? Now, I don't have a 50s here to directly compare, but I'm fairly certain these are the same. At the very least, they definitely are really similarly chunky. <laughs> While we're on the subject of playability though, I want to highlight this fingerboard. The last two Epiphones I've gotten, this and the Matt Hafey Origins, these have been some of the best playing Epiphones I've ever tried. Well polished and level frets, and now they've even started rolling the edges of the fingerboard. This is a massive, massive improvement for Epiphone. I've said before that was the one thing they were missing compared to other import brands. It made their guitars feel, I don't know, sterile? They felt like they just popped out of a guitar making machine, not so anymore. This feels so satisfying. Smoother, more crafted, more comfortable to play. So that's really nice and so is this exclusive slash collection case. Nice faux leather exterior, really soft plush interior. It's got a signature rock and, <coughs> and roll scully graph on it and that's kind of really it. You got strap locks but nothing else in the way of case candy. <coughs> I really miss the Certificate of Authenticity booklet Epiphone Signature Models came with back in the day. Back in the day wasn't even that long ago, it came with the previous slash signatures. The serial was handwritten, it added a really human element to a super mass produced guitar. Even though, you'd actually be surprised, even mass produced guitars have a lot of human involvement, especially Epiphones. I learned this from a Phil McKnight Know Your Gear video, they're made in the quote, old way at their China facility. They use much less advanced machinery than Ibanez does, for example, at their Indonesia facility. And this one, of course, has been blessed by Slash, so more human involvement, or guitar god involvement, rather. <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is that the COA booklet was a really nice touch. Very sad they're no longer doing that, especially now with inflation, these are more expensive. Good case candy also adds to resale value, and let's talk about that for a second. Because this is still a Slash model, one of the most famous Les Paul players to have ever existed. It's got his signature on the truss rod cover and Scully on the back of the headstock. Usually these are very subtly slashed. This one's a little different because it's been vandalized. But his signature model being subtle, that's usually a plus in my book. You know, it's not aggressively slash. Means fans get the benefit of it being an artist model, but also anyone can pick it up and make it their own. But wait a second, this not being aggressively slash isn't that a problem when trying to differentiate it from the normal Les Paul standard 50s and trying to justify the higher price tag? Well, hang on a second. Okay. Even though it's subtly slash, signature models tend to hold their value over time better than core production models, or at least they usually do because artist models tend to be limited runs. This slash collection seems to be unlimited, part of the main lineup. So essentially, same specs and same mass produced availability as Epiphone's Les Paul standard 50s, but for more money. <laughs> so do I like my Epiphone slash Les Paul, absolutely. It is a genuinely good Les Paul standard. And it's been signed by the main man himself, but is it a good deal? No, it's not a good deal. Especially the gold top, oh man. Unless you absolutely need one of the exclusive colors, to be fair, the colors are pretty cool, or you're a slash super fan, you can save yourself some money with the standard 50s for a near identical playing experience. Or better yet, consider the 1959 Les Paul standard. It's 100 bucks less, nice aged gloss finish, comes with a hard case too. The hard case even has a pink plush interior, which I personally consider a huge bonus. And it comes loaded with Gibson USA burst buckers, upgraded Mallory capacitors, switchcraft components. That guitar 
that is a good deal. But those are just my thoughts. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What are your thoughts on the Epiphone Slash collection? How do you feel it compares with the rest of Epiphone's lineup? I feel like at some point, I just need to do a tier list of all the Epiphones I've tried. There have been so many on the channel, so, so many. And I get a ton of questions like, how's this one compared to that one? How's that one compared to this other one? Let me know if you wanna see that. Make sure you're subscribed, you've got notifications turned on because Honestly, I'm not really sure what subscriptions do anymore. Notifications are what you want if you don't want to miss any new uploads from me. Shout out to my wonderful patrons for making this and all the other videos possible. They're awesome. Consider joining them if you want to support the channel and get bonus extras. We're so close to a 4K upgrade made possible by the patrons. In the meantime, affiliate, social media, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you the next video.